we'll come to this presentation about Q. So what is Q? Q is a job queuing and quota management system. It's uh, virtually inserted just before the Kubernetes scheduler. And uh, it is in charge of um, when a job is uh, submitted uh, to uh, decide if it should be admitted for scheduling or it should be deleted in case of uh, uh, resource scarcity, scarcity based on, uh, on queue management. So how does it work basically? I was mentioning like when a job pop up. Um, so what happens normally is that Kubernetes will just like take this job and it will create the relevant pod. But uh, to queue, to make you be able to work, we need to enable a, a feature yet, which is suspend job. So every job that will be uh, submitted into the Kubernetes cluster, it will um, it will be suspended, and this is where uh, queue will start to work. So normally. The job controller will watch the job, and then Q will uh, be notified about the uh, job creation. Q will then create a workload object uh, defining uh, a pod set, which is basically um, a group of pods that uh, the job will be bringing, and it will also determine uh, the resource request and request uh, resource limits. Um, the the job when it is submitted to queue it also holds the name of the local queue where the workload will be submitted and this is how uh, queue will determine where to place uh, the job but we will go into detail with that within the, the next slides uh, once the workload decides in which potential node it will be uh, assigned it just delegates the scheduling of the pod to the uh, to the kubernetes scheduler and finally, the job, uh, the pod, sorry, gets created into uh, the relevant Kubernetes node. So how does Q really work? It's uh, quite simple. It relies on a few uh, basic concepts that we will we'll go into detail uh, right now. So uh, the concepts that we'll, we will look into detail are resource flavor, cluster queue, cohort, local queue, workload, and jobs. And an additional concept that we will see, which is the workload priority class. So the first concept is the resource flavor. So a resource flavor is a kind of super label uh, that allows you to group uh, Kubernetes nodes based on labels, tains, and tolerations. Um, so when you create a resource label, uh, resource flavor, um, when you create a resource flavor, uh, you define uh, the node labels that. Uh, that the resource flavor will select. When you define the resource flavor, so when you define a resource flavor, you can specify a, node, a set of node labels, and all the nodes that match these labels, they will be uh, grouped within this resource flavor. The next important concept is the, the cluster queue. So the cluster queue is a, is a cluster scope object and uh, usually this is defined by the Roy admin persona. Uh, resource queue has access to resources and these resources are brought by the attachment of uh, resource flavors. So you can attach uh, several resource flavors within resource groups that lives inside of the cluster group. Um, and uh, this will give uh, access to the cluster group to these specified resources. Um, yeah, also the cluster, the cluster queue defines the quota of every resource. So we have a specific field, it's called the nominal quota. And the nominal quota gives the minimum uh, amount for a specified resource that can be used or guaranteed to, uh, to this cluster queue. Cluster queue can also be grouped within cohort. So when there is under utilization of resources, uh, the core system allows like borrowing of resources between cluster queues who, that belongs to the same uh, to the same cohort. Uh, yeah, one cluster queue can only belong to one cohort, so it cannot belong to several cohorts. And uh, in the same cohort, they can uh, borrow from each other uh, unused 
resources based on quota. And uh, of course, there is like some priority and preemption that can happen, and we will go into, det in, into detail for that within the next slides. Um, okay. So the next concept is the local queue. So the local queue right now, it's, uh, it's a namespace scoped object. And this can be created by uh, uh, queue users or uh, job submitters, I would say. Um, the local queue, uh, a local queue is linked to exactly one cluster queue. So if you have like one local queue, you will specify uh, which cluster queue it will use. And uh, this specified cluster queue determines for your workloads uh, in which uh, cluster queue they may uh, they may land in terms of resource usage. Um, so what is a workload? Uh, we have seen previously that when a job is submitted, there is a workload object that gets created by queue. Uh, there are different types of jobs that are supported by queue. Um, so the batch v1 job, uh, which is basically the the classical scheduling, the classical Kubernetes job, but uh, some other type of jobs are supported like Ray jobs or uh, classical pods or deployments and so on. And uh, yeah, the list can, can be expanded uh, in future versions of Q. Um, a workload is uh, the unit of admission in Q. It will contain the uh, local name, the local Q name so as I mentioned, uh, a workload will be attached to only one queue. And so in the, as it is uh, taken from the job description, this is held by a label, a specific label that queue will read from the pod, from the job, and it will create the, the corresponding workload with the, with the same queue name value. And also it will gather the resource requirements for the pod. So based on the uh, requirements defined in the job, it will also uh, extrapolate the resource request and resource limit for every uh, for all the pods that are defined within the within the workload. Uh, one small remark: workloads are not intended to be created by users; they are created automatically by the queue controller, and uh, they can uh, they can. Uh, the, yeah. So one small remark. Workloads are not intended to be created by end users. They are created by the queue controller automatically and they sync the decisions and statuses for each object. If you want to have a big picture of how things work, the first step is when a job is submitted. This is here. Um, the job controller in Kubernetes will be watching that and notify this. It will create the relevant object into the API server. Then the queue controller will get the, uh, the information by watching the API server. The queue controller will then create the relevant workload and uh, attach it to a local queue based on some uh, scheduling decisions. So it, uh, it may depend on the available resources, uh, the quota assigned to the cluster queue, uh, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, then, based on the cluster queue attached to the local queue, and the resource flavor that will be matching the requirements for this workload, the node destination will be assigned, and uh, this will be delegated to the scheduler, uh, who will decide where the pods will uh, will be scheduled. 